a ticket, but you can bet they're watching the show. So we don't gotta tell them, there's a lot they already know. It's in the words we say, and everything we do. The treasure that we chase, yeah, it's all to live and prove. Yeah, it's like the curtain rises every time we walk in the room. So let your spotlight show everywhere. We love to make Jesus center stage here on Hope Today, and we're so glad that you're with us. I'm Anna, Tom is with me, and Tom, it's a beautiful day to make Jesus famous. Well, it is, and you know what? You just heard Sean Bean coming up on Hope Today, the story behind this emerging Christian artist who learned the power of surrender. I love that. Sydney had a chance to sit down with Sean B when he stopped by our studios to hear about his journey and how he's using his gifts to bring hope and inspiration to the next generation. I love that. Uh, there's a power in music. And when you see someone that's committed to the Lord, Anna, and, and truly like ready to take that next step, to use those gifts to make a difference in people's lives, it's, it's a thrilling thing. Yeah, it's so thrilling. And the truth is, is that God has put such unique gifts inside of you too. He has literally put greatness inside of you because he gave you his Holy Spirit to empower you. And today we just, through these conversations, through the music, we want you to be reminded of who you are in Christ. There's so much work to be done in this world. And how cool is it, Tom, that God has called us, like little old us, to go out and be light in a dark world. Well, somebody hasn't called me little for a long time, but little <laughs> old us, but just little old us, just we're the bringers of the light of God into, into this world. It's a dark world. And, you know, with Palm Sunday coming up, you know, we're, we're entering that Holy Week and, you know, the, 
the, the palms will be, uh, you know, the, the kids in some churches, they give away a little palm, Anna, right. and, uh, and, or they make a palm in, in, in Sunday school or something. Think about everybody laying those palms down, welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem. Right. It's only a week later, people were crying for his crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very true. They were making Jesus famous yeah. on Palm Sunday, and yet then they got some deception, some lies, things got twisted in their mind about who Jesus was, and then suddenly they took him down off of that high place that they put him, and they crucified him. And so today, just remember who Christ is in your life. And as we move into the story of the crucifixion, Jesus Jesus' death and his life, like what an amazing revelation and truth for us that Jesus took on all of our shame, all of our sin, all that ugly stuff that we humans carry, and he took it to the grave, and Jesus rose back up victorious and left all that stuff in the grave so that we too can rise back That's up and be victorious. There. Good Sunday yeah. morning, good Easter preaching there. Right. We're coming right up after a quick break. The music and story of emerging Christian artist Sean B. We'll be right back. When Laura called our 24 7 prayer line, she had so much fear that she didn't want to leave her house. She had lost her husband of 54 years just six months earlier. Laura was flipping through TV stations when she came across Cornerstone Television she felt compelled to call. One of our prayer partners talked, listened, and prayed with her for 45 minutes. At the end, Laura said how much the ministry had helped relieve her fear. Praise God for how He is using CTVN. When you give, you become part of what He is doing. This month, when you give, we'll send wild expectance as our way of saying thank you. This book will inspire you to live your life as God intended. To give and request your copy, visit us online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Hope happens here. Our next guest is a former youth pastor from Denver who is now one of the featured artists on the Winter Jam 2023 tour. Sean B. creates Christ-centered music in hopes of inspiring the next generation. And Sean B., we are so glad to have you back with us. It is I'm such a super, joy. super happy to be here with you guys. This is great. Yeah, so you are such a light right now in Christian music. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how God called you because at one point you were in ministry as a yeah. pastor, then out into music. Wow. So. The time that I was blessed to be, you know, a pastor in, in ministry, that was just an incredible time. And I believe that God, even now in the music side of things, is still giving all of that season purpose. Um, just the way that those two things have tied in together has been incredible. But yeah, before this, I was able to do uh, next gen leadership. So I was uh, over children's ministry. I was in middle school ministry. I was in youth ministry. So just kind of all of the all of the facets. And then I even got to you know give an occasional message on a Sunday. And so that experience was really cool because it reminded me and it just really drove into my heart that ministry is the purpose of our life. You know, our life is to reach people, it's to encourage people, it's to, you know, help people change their life and come to see that, you know, Jesus is the one that changes the life. And so when I had that open opportunity to step in and do music, I just thought, wow, I literally can do everything that I've been doing now on a bigger platform to, you know, to many more people. And so when God called me into that, I was just like, yeah, let's, let's go, let's go all the way. Um, so yeah, but the, the way that I got there anyway, it was, it was really cool because I had always wanted to do music and just the, the opportunity never really showed up. I, I took a leap of faith one time. I went out to visit Nashville, Tennessee and I just, I had a couple of meetings and my, my current management team, We Rock Entertainment, they said, hey, you know, we may be interested in working with you, but you know, we'll see, we'll, you know, do you live here? No, you don't live here yet? Okay, well, you know, that might help. And so I called my wife that night, I'm like, hey, you know, we, we have an opportunity possibly, like it's not for sure, but there might be an open door here, we'd have to move out here. And I'm worried about what she's gonna say, I'm thinking she's not gonna be down for mm -hmm. this, her first response literally, she didn't say anything else. She said, okay, I'll start packing. And I was like, come on. All right, let's go. <laughs> so about a about month and a half after that, we were living in Tennessee and just kind of 
it was this interesting moment where, you know, we're in the car, we're driving, and I'm like, God, we like all that we have is right here. <laughs> we we left everything that we had, and we're just like doing this, where where we feel that you called us to move, and so and I just felt this like overwhelming calmness though, of God telling me, hey, I love that you just said all you have is right here because. I'm right here and like this is all you need. You know, if you if you have obedience, I'm going to take care of the rest. And he has incredibly taken care of the rest from that point on. He truly has and he's taking you on a, a remarkable journey and I just love yeah. that you said that you had such calm and peace. It's yeah. like when his peace is with you, you know that's, you're going the it. right way. And one thing, Sean, that you have something, a phrase that you have like it's, you know, as a standard for you, we didn't come this far just yes. to come this far. So can you break down that for us, what that means and yes. also how that ties into your personal story. Yeah, so we didn't come this far just to come this far. That means that God gives purpose to everything that you've been through. You know, even the time that you lived without him, God can take the most broken story and give it meaning and give it purpose if we allow him to step into that story. Um, that's the biggest part of it, you know, and, and at that point when God takes over, Every wrong thing you've ever done, every lesson that you've had to learn, everything that's ever happened to you now has purpose because you can take what's happened and you can apply it not only to your life, but you can tell other people, hey, this is the person that I was. This is what I've been through, this is what I've seen, but this is where I am now. And let me tell you why. It's because of what Jesus did when he stepped into my life. And so now your story is not just about you but it's about the things that God did through you. And your life is no longer just for you, but your life is a living example to people who come behind you to say like, wow, okay, I can learn from that. And so if your story can, you know, save somebody else's story, help change and help make, help somebody else make the right decision, make go a different path than you did, then there's purpose in all of that. And so we didn't come this far just to come this far. It means that, you know, just like I said, God will use everything if we allow him to. Nothing is for nothing yeah. <laughs> when God's in the story, you know? So tell us about your story. Yeah. Like what like what was that pathway and that Jesus had to step in? Because with all of us, like, there's a moment where we come to the end of ourselves yeah. and we surrender. So tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, so, so for me, I just got so, I got so tied up in trying to shine for myself. <laughs> that, that, was, that was the biggest thing. And you know, for a long time, it would just bring so much anxiety and I, I would just stress on like, how do people see me? I wanna be seen as like this really cool, you know, I, I want everybody to like me and it, it all mattered, you know, it was just like, it was dying for people's acceptance. And it was really what it came back down to is realizing like, I didn't know where my identity was at the time. I didn't know who I was. And so I found my identity in the amount of people that thought good things about me or, you know, like, or just, just that kind of thing. And so it was such a battle of, you know, now that I look back, knowing that it was just like pride that was overwhelming, like telling me, hey, you need, you need to be like this, you need to be like this. And so I got so caught in trying to shine for myself, right? And it wasn't until I come across this Bible verse, Matthew 5:16. It says, "In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven." And that verse changed everything for me, because I was wondering why, like, why am I trying so hard and just feeling so so empty? Why why do I need people to like me? Why do I need all of this? And you know, that verse just hit me because it's like, well, dude, you're doing everything for the wrong reason. You know, you're doing everything for yourself to elevate yourself, to make people see you. And that's not our calling. You know, our, our calling is to do those things to glorify God. And so that's when God taught me, hey, your life is not about the things that you do, but it's about the things that I'm going to do through you. And so when people see you, they're actually going to see me. Mm -hmm. And so that changed everything because it really, it took the pressure off and it took the anxiety off because I'm like, you know what? That's, that's right. Like it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter <laughs> what everybody thinks of me. I should be more concerned with what people think of the God that I say that I represent. Mm -hmm. And so that helped me handle life with more grace, with uh, more humility. It helped me treat people better. It helped me treat, honestly, treat people the way that, you know, I believe that, you know, mm -hmm. God would want us to treat them. Um, it just changed the whole perspective of, of life and the way that I lived. And so it was that, that time in my life for sure that I was just like, you know what, all right, God, take all of this from me. I'm gonna give you all of this and everything that I do, it's, it's a prayer that I found that um, I still pray today before everything. I prayed it before this interview <laughs> um, is, you know, God, go before me, be with me and stay after me. You know, mm -hmm. just, just prepare the way 
be with me is, you know, shine through me. You know, when I speak through me, sing through me, smile through me, let people see you when they see me. Yeah. And then to be after me is just, you know, remain wherever we were. Like, let this mean something more than an interview. Let, yeah. you know, let what's said here, let what's done here, let it stay and make an impact that's going to last more than just today. Um, and so that, that whole journey kind of brought me to that point of saying like, all right, this isn't about me anymore. This is it's about what God's going to do through me. I love what you're just saying, Sean, because so many, I think we don't want to admit it, that we struggle with pride. We yeah. struggle with people pleasing, but when we lay it all, we surrender. And I yeah. love what you said. You prayed even before, you know, talking like <laughs> yeah. us talking yeah. and yeah. just the music you do, but it's just like, God, like go before me and to be with me. Absolutely. And he is truly is with you. Sean, thank you so much for just sharing your story and opening up today. I know it's truly touched the hearts of our viewers today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a great opportunity. It's a wonderful opportunity. And so stay tuned because don't go away because right now we are going to go into Sean B's songs step into my story. Take a look. story of Jesus stepping into our story, right? There's an intersection that happens. There's a place where God meets us if we've come to know him. And if you haven't come to know him, God wants that intersection, wants that place in your life where he steps into your story. And all of a sudden things begin to change and we begin to understand the reason for which we live, the reason for which we were created is to serve him and use our gifts, use our talents to magnify the Lord, just like Sean B is doing there. We have a scripture for you today. It's Matthew 5, verse 16. It says this, 
In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Anna, tell me about letting your light shine before others. Right, yeah, so this light that we have inside of us, I mean, what does it mean when Jesus says, let your light? Well, gosh, I mean, first of all, the fact that Jesus has given us his Holy Spirit to live inside of us. When we think about the greatness of our God and that Jesus is allowing all of that to live in us, that is our light that we are to radiate out into this earth. And I just really appreciated our guest today because he, he spoke with such authenticity and humility that really can reflect the journey that many of us go through where we start to unravel like what are the gifts and talents that God has given me and we start practicing them and getting more confident sometimes we can be more focused on ourselves when really it's all about focusing on on others and letting Jesus shine through us Tom well uh, yeah you know he's so clearly using those gifts you know but we all have gifts, you have gifts. You know, we think, you think, well, Tom, I can't preach, I can't sing, I can't. Well, look, we've all been there doubting our gifts and doubting what, what we have the ability to do. But if you give those things to God, he all of a sudden begins to show that it's like, oh, people discover gifts inside themselves they didn't know they had. And you know, maybe you're, you have a gift of service where you can just bless somebody because you know how to fix their car or you know how to, to uh, you know, give them, a, bake them a, a, a pie, give them a meal, something to bless them if they're going through a hard time. Those are all gifts that we, man, when we use those, all of a sudden we see that our life has been, uh, that, that those gifts have been put inside of us for a reason. Yes, we can bless our family. Yes, we can you know, make our own home but then we can give out uh, those things. And, you know, and I think of, um, I'm thinking about just when he said step into, you know, our story, I'm right. thinking about the, the prodigal son. I, I just want to take a moment and say, has Jesus stepped into your story? There's a story of the prodigal son where he went away from his father. He took a, the money that was his inheritance, something that he should not have done. And he went and he, and he took that out and he just wasted it. He spent it in riotous living, the Bible says. And you know, he, then he, he came to the end of himself. He didn't have any more money, didn't have any more friends, didn't have any place to go. Have you ever been there? Have you been there where it seems like everything has fallen apart and you're by yourself? Well, he knew that, you know, and here he was trying to get any job he could. He was hungry and he said, in my father's house, you know, there's at least food. Maybe I could go back to my father. Maybe I could go back there and, and just be a hired person. It won't be the same as before. He won't love me like before. He won't care for me. I won't be a son anymore like before. But at least I'll have a roof over my head and I'll have a place to sleep and food to eat. So he thought, I'll go back. Well, you know the story, don't you? The father saw him from afar off. Why did he see him? Because he was looking for him. He wanted to, to see his son return. He was brokenhearted. That's God for you today. If you don't know God, that's God for you today. He is looking for you. If you're in that place of brokenness, then I, I, I want to tell you that the Father is looking for you. And he ran through the town, something that dignified men didn't do in those days, ran through the town, and he went to this son that everybody knew had broken his heart. Everybody knew had turned his back on him. He went and he said, and he saw his son and he hugged him and he, he wept on him, kissed his neck. And the son said, I've, I've sinned against you and God. Maybe I could be a hired hand. And you know what? The father didn't even hear that. He just was glad that his son returned. And he, he brought him back in and he said, let's celebrate. Kill the fatted calf. Put a ring on his finger. Put shoes on his feet. Put a robe on him. He restored him back to his sonship. That's you today too. If you've never had a relationship with Jesus Christ, or maybe you're like the prodigal son, you wasted it, and you want to come back to God, just come back to him today. Anna, anyone can return 
right now. Yeah, anyone can return to Jesus. His arms are always open, waiting for you to restore you. Like Tom said, Jesus is ready to restore you back to who he created you to be. I love this talk about story, that we're inviting God into our story. But guess what? God's the one that wrote your story. Like it says in Psalm 139, that every day of your life was written before one of them came to be. I mean, think about that. You have a God that loves you so much, like he wanted you on this earth. He designed you. He wrote this whole story for you to live out. And then when we are born, the angels celebrate, and then we go on to live this life. And well, there's detours and there's things that break us and there's things that we have to figure out. and we might feel like, well, we're not really that masterpiece that God made me to be. But see, that's why Jesus had to go to the cross because he knew that this world was full of sin and that we needed a savior. We needed a redeemer to put us back together again and show us who we are show us the plans that he has for us. Like we're actually living right in God's story in this world. Our story is not about us at all. It is about what God is doing in this world. So today, if the enemy has you feeling hopeless, like there's just, there's no hope for me. Like I've done too many bad things. Mm. Nope, Jesus's forgiveness is so much greater than any sin that you have done. He's ready to take you out of those ashes and put the crown of beauty on your head to clothe you in robes of salvation, the garments of righteousness to give you joy in place of your mourning, to take you out of your grief and give you a new start again. So remember that we would love to hear what you've been going through. We would love to pray with you and speak the hope of God's truth into your life. Our prayer partners are here 24-7. You can call 888-665-4483. And the cool thing is you will get a live actual person on the other end of the line that loves you and wants to minister to your heart. So what are you going to do with what we've heard Sean B say, with what Anna and I have said? God's knocking on the door. There's a door on your heart. He's knocking. Open that door and let him step into your life. Let him step into the story that he's writing for you. God loves you. He cares about you. He has plans and purposes for you. But part of it depends on us. Open the door of your life. Say, Lord, come into my life. Be my Savior and Lord. Or Lord, I've fallen away. I've spent my money the wrong way. I've spent my life the wrong way. I want you in my life. He's going to run to you right now. 